Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Desire not just careless desire proverbs 18 verse 1 through desire a man any man having separated himself seeketh and intermeddled with all wisdom i like you to pray and say lord i desire an encounter there is something i need to hear tonight that will take me to the next dimension there is something i have to hear there is something i have to hear there is something I have to hear tonight. Shila parato sozibada kala parianda kasivata. There is something I have to get tonight. sing it that part that tells you all the universe can you sing that part that's what i want you to hear you have the choose to believe you we are men and women who have chosen to trust you we believe you we believe your ways we believe your truth we are not rebels we will not argue with your truth 
your word is infallible it's been tested too many times to be doubted lord tonight we align our hearts to your truth the truths that make us free and the truths that can lift us up we declare in the name of jesus that that word that upholds all things will uphold our lives lord tonight we submit our hearts to your wisdom we declare our need for wisdom we declare our need for wisdom and lord we crave for it we cry for it in the name of jesus christ hallelujah praise the lord before we sit down it never gets too much to pray i just like you to pray just one prayer and say lord i crave for your wisdom i i reckon that i need more of your wisdom and i crave for it like a man seeks for silver like a man seeks for gold i crave for your wisdom wisdom is the principal thing the bible says therefore get wisdom it says with all thy getting get understanding exalt her and she shall promote thee she shall bring an ornament of glory a crown shall she deliver unto thee when thou dost embrace her hallelujah please be seated good evening everyone i never marvel stop marveling at the wisdom of god the wisdom of god can turn any man who believes it and walks in that reality into a sign and a wonder hallelujah and i sincerely believe with all my heart that that is why we are here i come here because i recognize my need for wisdom i recognize that it is only in his presence and only when his word is accurately communicated the principles of the word are accurately communicated not the information the information has no power to produce change you see let me tell you something when people do not have faith it is not because they do not believe god there is a level of accuracy with which the word of god was designed to be communicated and if that word is communicated properly there is a spiritual logic to it that becomes the basis upon which the faith of the people are grounded paul said when i came to you i did not come with the excellency of speech he says but in the demonstration of power that your faith will not be grounded upon the wisdom of men sophia wisdom that is a product of education experience that is limited suggestions of men opinions that were based on a very short view but the bible says forever O lord thy word is settled it never said it's settled in the earth it's settled in heaven it takes doing what heaven has done to make the word settle in our lives in the name of jesus so I welcome everyone. Thank you for coming. As always, those following us online and thousands of people, we love you, we honor you. Let your hearts be open. Let your spirits be open. For those coming here for the first time, this is Koinonia. And we're on a series, Thrive Part 2. T-H-R-I-V-E. This is Part 2. The series is an attempt to concretize upon our hearts some of the keys that are required for transgenerational relevance some of the keys that are required for rising above the vicissitudes of life like i said last week um it will be irresponsible to pretend that the economic turmoil the hardship and all of the things that people are going through uh, is not telling on people you cannot imagine the stories that have emerged as a result of people's frustration whenever a people are limited in any way it will only take time they will react and oftentimes they will react based on the informations that they have so they will use violence they would um, do a lot of very stupid things i've heard of people walking naked 
for money. I've heard of people giving their children for all kinds of immoral things for money. I've heard of people doing all sorts of things. And, and the truth about it is that except you are shielded with revelation, um, you will really feel the gravity of what is happening. Institutions are lamenting. Churches are lamenting. Social organizations, businesses lamenting. The government itself is lamenting. And that means that we have to source for light and life from another dimension, another reality that is beyond the scope of the human experience. Amen. And I started sharing with us last week how that it is possible to rise above these things. I love the song that the worship team complicated. There is victory. Listen, listen. There is no experience of anyone, regardless of what the peculiar experience is, that is worthy enough to disprove the power, the integrity, the glory, and the efficacy of the person and the word of God. Are we together? If I die today of sickness, my dying of sickness will raise a lot of questions among those who love me, those connected to this vision, and several people across the world but it does not change the fact that God is mighty and it is within his power to heal are we together if you really want to receive from God you must desist from isolating your singular experience and using it as a template to judge everything the Bible says about God because our experiences are limited the Bible says that we see in part first Corinthians 13 we see in part therefore we prophesy our communications and that which we do is according to our perspectives this is why i i seek him as a matter of life and death let it not be that i'm holding on to a perspective that after many years of being convicted by it and leading others to be convicted by it i discover that i have lived in error and have communicated the same to people the bible says that we be careful so that what we call light be not darkness after many years of a man's life you can discover that the very foundation upon which your convictions are built upon is wrong inaccurate imbalanced are we together so when we come before his presence our hearts must be opened you don't come to god with an opinion hoping that he agrees with you when you come to him your heart is absolutely open you say lord i am aware of my vulnerability i'm a product of culture i'm a product of genetic programming i'm a product of environmental conditioning and many of the realities that i've held as true though popular though spiritual may not be consistent with your path so i come to you with every open-heartedness trusting that you will build you will tear down you will rearrange and bring order to my life and that's what god is doing in the name of jesus every time you see consistent results in the life of a man in the life of a people in the life of a territory it is because there is something that is done correctly whether or not the practitioners are aware of the dynamics of what they are doing are we together whether or not the individuals can explain in detail what they are doing or not the moment you see consistent results regardless of limitations there are laws there are principles that are being practiced are we together and uh, i'm going to take it from there i shared with us a few things four points in all we took two i would begin to take from um, where we left off last week and then we'll continue number one i told us that the key to rising above the vicissitudes of life rising above the challenges and the things that hold men crippled spiritually economically and so on and so forth the first key is a genuine encounter with jesus christ the first key to becoming relevant is not being educated the first key to becoming relevant is not having business acumen. It's not even being a leader. Are we together? It's not, it's not any of these things. Success and any kind of impact, a life of notable impact starts from the health and the 
quality of a man's spiritual life. Say amen. The measure of your impact through God in the kingdom is directly associated with the genuineness of your hunger, the sincerity of your love for God. While we're away on a ministration in the course of the week, I met a man of God who was at the meeting and he just came to see me and talk to me. And, um, you know, God did great things and honored himself in the meeting. And the man sat down and he began to weep like a baby. And he said, Sir, what is the secret? I don't know how many times people have asked this. What is the secret? And I kept looking at him. And I said, Sir, I can bet that you might be disappointed if I tell you. I wish the secret were just fasting and prayer. I wish the secret were just the quality of my word study life. I wish the secret were just that I was anointed. As important as those things are, I told him, if you want me to be sincere with you and you have the heart to receive, the secret to the dimensions that by the grace of God I've been able to access, are we together, is tied primarily to my passion for God and my sincere desire to see him glorified my passion for God and my sincere desire to see him glorified. You've heard me say it and God knows my heart. I love God more than ministry. I love God more than money. I love God more than anointing. I don't use him for these things. Never have and never will. I rather give up ministry a thousand times to remain in his presence and to remain in love with him. I even love him more than the quest for his presence. This is where I believe many people miss it. Because primarily our motives are corrupted. God for us means many things. For other people, he's just a solution like a charm, like a genie. That you use and invoke his name, invoke his blood, invoke his fire, invoke whatever to get results. You're not going to really host extraordinary results that way are we together a genuine encounter with Jesus that births the fear of God in you that births love for God and love for humanity it's not enough to love God you must love the people he has sent to you and you must love the body I love the body of Christ with all my heart I am part of it. I'm proud to be part of it. I love the body of Christ. I may not agree with every perspective in the body of Christ. I may not hold as part of my conviction every opinion and perspective, but it's, it's too little a reason to not love the body of Christ. I love the body of Christ, regardless of man of God, regardless of denomination, regardless of exploits or setbacks. I genuinely love the body of Christ now let me tell you when you get to this spiritual state when you can assume this posture you are ready to host the grace for transgenerational relevance not outside of this condition the Bible says no eye has seen no ear has heard neither has it come into the heart of any man that which God has in store not for them that pray not for them that seek him for them that love him when a man truly falls in love with God and is addicted with his presence, his life, everything about God becomes an obsession to you. His house, his life, his word, everything, your whole life is poured as a drink offering. Then you are ready to rise above any challenge. I'm telling you, challenges will come upon you. You will rise and shake them off as if they do not exist. Believe me, I know what I'm saying. Are we together? So we discuss that. And I said how that many believers, they may be born again, but they've not had a genuine encounter with Jesus. An encounter that is greater than any circumstance. You know, when people doubt God and turn and insult God to his face over situations and circumstances, Lord, I pray for, for tea. You didn't give me tea. I prayed for bread. You didn't give me bread. I prayed for CGPA. I prayed for a job. You are not faithful and um, you know god if you don't do this i will backslide is because you've not had an encounter the remedy for that kind of talk is just an encounter it's not counseling 
the remedy is an encounter there is a way that a man encounters god that you owe him your allegiance regardless of what happens around your life are we together it's very important whether you bless me or not i'm in love with you to a point of addiction whether ministry rises or not it has no it it, it it does not contribute in any way to influencing my love and my appetite for you please i pray that as you listen to me this will become a reality that this will not just become a talk from a preacher you see when you are pretending certain things in the kingdom it will only take time time does not change anything but time is a revealer of motives time will reveal whether you genuinely love god or not the second thing we said that is the key and i'll pick up from here now that's where we left up last week is the power of mental transformation the second key that is required to rise above and beyond the challenges in life listen please to rise above the limitations that plague mankind to rise to a life that is of notable transgenerational relevance a degree of kingdom impact that outlives you if christ tarries the power of mental transformation listen i said it it never it never tires me to communicate to god's people the extent to which the quality of their paradigm can determine the course of their future in ministry in life in business in marriage in any area at all the quality of your mindset are we together and i told us last week that we are conditioned in two ways basically the first condition is a genetic programming we are programmed genetically by reason of the transfer of traits I'm being very slow and being very detailed because I want us to get this. The second, which is the most disastrous or most um, notable of the transformations is environmental programming. Say environmental programming. We are programmed environmentally, which can be engineered by culture, past experiences, our levels of exposure, the environment that we grew up in chances are that if you never saw a successful person growing up you do not have a reference you see belief is based on a reference are we together you cannot believe vaguely there must be a reference preferably a physical living reference that becomes a standard and the platform upon which your convictions are built this is why the disciples were very powerful jesus was a reference and that's why every leader that must teach people part of the assignment of every leader is not only to communicate his persuasions but to be a reference of the same it is easy for people to believe when there is a measure when a when a leader is in different ways reference worthy it becomes easy for individuals to connect when a man is teaching about the anointing and there is some degree of the demonstration of the power and the grace of God upon his life it becomes easy for the listeners to be persuaded by that dimension are we together it is very difficult listen it is very difficult to persuade people over a reality that your life cannot be a reference of no matter how little the reference is that it is worthy of conviction the same thing i am teaching now i am going to be teaching it 10 15 years to come but it will be more impactful than it is now because by that time my life will be a higher reference than it is now the same way some of the things i'm sharing now were the things that i shared a number of years past but their impact um were not as impactful as it is now of course i've grown in the anointing but also there have been maybe a few evidences here and there that can back up and support that communication communication communicating a dimension of spiritual reality or a dimension of any reality that does not have your life as a commendable reference is very frustrating 
this already is a lesson for someone that if you want to change your world the first key is to change yourself that you become a template enough people are not that hardened people are only obsessed with results it is god that sees the heart men look at the outward appearance they want to see that if you are teaching on divine health there is a measure of that reality at work in you if you are teaching on kingdom wealth and prosperity there is a measure of that reality if you are teaching on leadership or excellence or dimensions of kingdom reality there is a level of persuasion that stems from your own experience are we blessed tonight the power of mental transformation the bible says in first peter chapter 1 verse 9 it says receiving the end of your faith we discussed that last week it said even the salvation of your soul the salvation of your soul bringing your soul through the renewal of your mind to a point where it can host the realities that are resident within your spirit I began to discuss with us and we've done this over different series as we've discussed through the years the power of paradigms look at me listen let me tell you something as great as a man is he can limit God remember our scripture that has become an anthem in this place Psalm 78 verse 41 they limited the Holy One they limited the Holy One they limited the Holy One they said can God make a table in the wilderness they limited the Holy One it was not their fault it was their conditioning after 430 years of servitude with no hope of deliverance it was understandable that such a people as a corporate entity can doubt God something about our culture as good as it is something about our cultural experiences have informed us has created an understanding in our mind I was talking to a, a dear friend today who came over to see me and uh, we were discussing certain things he was along the side of um, the line of marriage and all of that and i was sharing with him uh, you know generally speaking you know we we got into different discussions and i was telling him that if i were to cop to counsel an intending couple i'm not going to waste time asking a lot of useless and vague questions the first thing i want to examine is their passion for god and then the next thing i want to examine the extent of their compatibility in terms of their understanding what is your viewpoint about god what is your viewpoint about money what is your viewpoint about your assignment and purpose what is your viewpoint about your personal life what is your viewpoint about external influences in your life and hope this does not just apply to the line of marriage it applies to everything there is something culture taught us about god there is something our well-meaning pastors and preachers told us about god their experiences were their sermons they preached it with confidence we embraced it with sincerity and we are victims of their limitations are we together there's something that our past experiences have done i always give an example if it took someone 10 years to get admission and you teach on favor it will take an extra anointing for that person to understand that message are we together because there is no template that represents favor in his life most of our families live from hand to mouth so every time we talk about prosperity our minds go straight to the people they insulted and the way they insulted them we have associated prosperity with negativism with fraud with with unseriousness with fetish demonic activities especially when young people are prosperous and you know let me tell you something after listening to a very powerful message after listening to a powerful series financial dominion the wealthy place the economic system of the kingdom you will think that your paradigm will change at once no it took a long time for it to be built it will take a repetition repetition of new ideas are the keys to changing our paradigms you have to you have to bring forth those new ideas again and again that's why the bible says faith comment by hearing and hearing the next word hearing there is understanding hearing and understanding what you hear by the word of god hallelujah proverbs tells us for as he thinketh in his heart for as he thinketh in his heart for as he thinketh in his heart 
it didn't say so he will become it didn't say so he is becoming for as he thinketh in his heart so is he for as he thinketh in his heart it equates my physical reality to my life this is the difference hear me brothers and sisters between a ceo who is living in an office with an ac having secretaries and pas and sitting down and you think he's just writing and then a megad a, 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 a security person who is opening and closing gates in anger and frustration most times a security person is angry how can i be working so hard and i'm receiving ten thousand per month and someone is there just writing and he's receiving five hundred thousand and my answer to that frustration is what switch them switch them for only two weeks take the megad don't change anything don't give him any orientation keep him in that office and take the ceo to the gate let me tell you what will happen after two weeks people will stop going to the office the ceo will do something to that gate that will make the customers remain there are we together his hospitality his open-heartedness his calmness his people skills and all of these other factors that are important for success will compel the people to love him and remain there let's go to our man in the office i know what he will be doing drinking all the juice in the fridge as fast as he can because something about his mind tells him you are you are certainly not going to be here for a long time then he looks for what to steal he signs documents anyhow and then he crosses his leg watching tv changing channels enjoying the ac probably texting all the people and say my life has changed the place will be dirty i assure you he will not empty the waste bin he doesn't have that frame of excellence his paradigm of excellence is not that way he will destroy everything he will misplace documents scatter them and wonder why they are arranged accurately at the end of it he will be frustrated he will steal something sizable and run away that will be the end of that man another popular example you wore a shirt for one year it was always clean and iron nobody knew it was one years old and you gave somebody and his mindset rubbed off on the shirt in one month he turned a white shirt to brown have you seen people like that yeah listen our physical environment is but a looking glass you never change your physical reality by arguing and trying to change things it's not even by trying to dress well and no 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 it's a culture you've got to change your mind so the bible says in philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 permit this mind to be in you which was also in christ jesus i was not born this way i re-engineered myself using the word of god and following those who through faith and patience have obtained the promise are we together you must be disloyal to any understanding and paradigm that has given demon spirits access points to destroy your life hallelujah paradigms there are people who will use a water system toilet a very clean toilet and finish i mean in a house not even the one in the hostels a clean toilet they enter the bathroom they saw everything clean they use it and leave it there and just go out smiling and they tell you are finished they took their mindsets there their mindsets took them there are we together yeah there is something about excellence as obvious as it should be you must be trained to discern it don't ever assume that because your mindset has changed it is so that's the reason why the higher you rise the more you must have a greater capacity for patience because when your mindset changes you wonder sometimes i look at people and i am amazed the way they think certain things that should be so obvious you are wondering how their mindset can veer off and give them such suggestions the power of paradigms are we together A man can come to you someone can come to a Jimmy for instance and sit down and look at him and look at his house and see how God has blessed him and then just look at him and say sir don't be offended anything for the boys and you are wondering 
you have access to a great man. What is there to say, sir? If you were to be at my age, what will you advise me to do? Or if you will be at my level in life, what two things do you think I should focus on now? We never ask questions. Have you seen people who have access to great men? One guy came to my hotel room in Abuja and he came just because of his friend. He wouldn't even come. He came there because of some well, a senior, someone like a mentor to him who is my friend. They came to greet me. When they said hello, we're discussing, I served them myself. I'm telling you, before anybody picked the thing, the guy carried the, the something and opened it and was taking it. Whereas the person, his mentor now kept quiet and was listening. You see why that guy is his mentor? Are we together? There is a logic to people's frustration. You can trace it and see why they are where they are. Paradigms. Mindsets. Why should I dress well? Um, do, am I rich? Paradigm. Are we together? There are people praying endlessly to have pot belly. Just like that. Why? Because based on certain cultural experiences. Now listen, I'm not being sarcastic. I'm teaching here. There are cultures, am I right? That train people. The moment they see you with some level of weight, they say, ah, this is, things are working. But you know that absolutely nothing is working. Paradigms. That's what informs people to live fake lives. There are people who, if God blesses with 50,000 now, their mindset tells them, look, you need to do something around you to make people believe you belong. So they run away and blow up everything and they come to people and you see sometimes, let me tell you something. When I meet people who are greater than me, I have no pressure to prove any point because I know I'm stupid when I'm doing it. But then you see a lot of people with their little understanding, small results here and there, they come and they never learn. They are trying to impress you. Hey, Jimmy, I'm a business person. I just read Robert Kiyosaki's book and you are watching his ignorance. That act alone is a revelation of where you are. Because great people are silent. Let her works speak for her at the gates. And so when we we're done, let me finish up my story. They were about to go. I was greeting them, you know. And then the gentleman just came to me and said, Sir, please, just one favor. I said, what is it? He said, let me snap with you. And I looked at him. I said, this, this boy is not wise. Honestly speaking. That's why we must crave for wisdom. I said, this, this guy is not smart one bit. I said, all right, that's okay. He snapped with me. About three hours later, my friend called me and said the guy posted a picture on Facebook that me and my very good friend, Apostle Joshua Selman. Now, hold on. I'm not insulting him. He may even be listening now. Listen. Listen. Do you know that gentleman thinks is by snapping with me so that every other person around Look, let me tell you. If a billionaire wears slippers and kaftan and you wear suit and stand close to him, something about you will tell you you are not yet ready for this place. If Benny Hinn stands today and I side, side by side with him and they say colleagues in ministry, even me I know. God knows. The devil knows that we are not colleagues. They will snap me standing when you watch the picture. It, I will be kneeling down. Because the reality of my heart <laughs> will reflect itself. Amen. Say paradigms. Say mindsets. Say programmings. Something that your parents held was responsible for their limitations. Culture. Experiences. Are we together? I don't want to be ahead of myself because the third thing I'll be talking about is where we'll dwell today in details. And um, I trust that God will change our mindsets. Now, let me tell you something. There is nothing God can do about your life, as powerful as he is, if you are not willing to change your mindset. Lord, I want you, I want you to bless me. And God says, okay, can you allow me to work on you? There's nothing wrong with me. God says, all right. Here you have it. That's good. There is a mindset that is responsible for poverty. There is a mindset that has, keep, has kept many men of God limited in life and ministry. 
there are certain mindsets that have, have kept corporate organizations small. Sometimes I wish that I knew the things I've learned in the last two, three years, maybe that I knew them 10, 20 years ago, I would have been 100 times without exaggeration higher than I am now. I pray that you will receive these things and you will believe them. In one minute, lay your hand on your head and say, Lord, there is something in my mind that is responsible for my limitations. Please take it out of me. Go ahead and pray. Take it out of me. Take it out of me. There's something. I grew up in Nigeria and there is a way Nigerians are lovely people. They are great people. But there is a faulty paradigm Take it away from my life. Take it away from my life. I declare my disloyalty to every paradigm. No matter how long I have held it. A paradigm that has stopped me from accessing the anointing. A paradigm that has stopped me from being a leader. A paradigm that has stopped me from being a visionary person. A paradigm that has stopped me from being wealthy. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. All right, so let's take today's own. The third key. Key number three to rising above recession. Key number three to rising above any kind of limitation is the discovery and the development of your value and your abilities. I'm going to dwell here. There is a lot to talk about here. The discovery and the development of your abilities, your value. I've done a lot of teachings and I have taught again and again how that a man's relevance, please listen to me, a man's relevance is not based on chance. It's not based on some kind of sentiments. The disparity, the, the stratification between the wealthy, between the great, the anointed, the influential, among many other reasons, primarily is their value. Write this down, please. Your value is a representation of your worth. Your value is a representation of your worth. W-O-R-D. Your value is a representation of your worth. Based on the solutions you provide, the problems you solve, and the lives you transform. Your value is a representation of your worth. Based on the solutions you provide, the problems you solve, and the lives you transform. This is the index for measuring a man's value. So when we say a person is valuable, a preacher is valuable, a businessman is valuable, a leader is valuable, please listen to me. We're not necessarily just talking about um, anything vague or anything fetish. A measure of the perception that people have over you on the strength of the solutions that you provide on the strength of the problems that you solve and on the strength of the lives and destinies that you transform put it in another way if you are not providing any kind of solution if you are not solving any kind of problem and if you are not contributing to the transformation of the lives and destinies of people you are not valuable and hear me please relevance and wealth in the kingdom is built on a reward system we've said it again and again let me just do a recap on it or touch a bit into that right you can get the message the wealthy place write this down this is the fundamental law that governs wealth and abundance and governs greatness in the kingdom our rewards in life and that reward can be financial the sense of security the sense of honor that we receive whatever it is our rewards in life will always be 
in exact proportion to number one the demand or the need for what we do number one the demand or the need for what we do number two our ability to do what we do number three the difficulty in replacing us my relevance in life my relevance as a man of God is not just tied to God the demand for what I do my ability to do what I do and the difficulty in replacing me let me tell you when you understand this you can accurately gauge why you are where you are right now this is why pastors are wealthy listen pastors think they are wealthy I was teaching the school of ministry uh, school of ministry students and I said many men of God think they are rich because they are serving God that's not the reason why people are wealthy it's based on a law if I am blessed today among other reasons is based on the perception that you and other people around this nation and in certain parts of the world have about me which is on the strength of what I do my proficiency in doing it are we together a man of God is not rich because he prayed for the sick a man of God is rich because he's providing solutions his solution may be supernatural in origin the solution may be spiritual when you connect people to Jesus Christ you are providing an eternal solution to the predicament of men and the system of God's economy was designed that every time you dispense value whether given for free or sold a reward must come to you a reward must come to you the laws are inflexible you cannot change them so for as long as there is an anointing upon me to bring people to the place of encounter for as long as there is an anointing upon me to birth transformation of the minds and destinies for as long as there is an anointing to birth revival to bring miracles signs and wonders I remain valuable as far as God is concerned and the benefactors let me tell you why that is powerful much more than business it is an intrinsic value value that is not dependent on any external environment and value that is rewarded only based on the perception of the benefactors so one person can bless me with 100 naira as a representation of his comprehension of my value another person can bless me with 10 million as his comprehension of the perception of my value don't say i am poor don't say i am mediocre what value are you bringing to the table of destiny call this stage the table of greatness there are enough seats for everyone but your past is your value your past is your value not just any value values that are needed and useful values that are needed and useful applicable to the predicament of your generation God is helping someone. Are we together? What have you brought to the table of greatness? That author, you, you know, listen, listen. Do you know why they call people thieves and frown? Because you see rewards, but you do not see the value that is commensurate to that reward. That's why we hate armed robbers. An armed robber brings a gun and says give me your one million and you tell him what is the value he said i have no value but i have a gun to threaten you so it is bad but that same one million you will give it to someone who offers a value that is worth it listen you don't sit down and wish to rise you grow in value to the level that matches what you desire so Frank Edward ministers and based on the perception of his value someone can bless him with 10 million whereas there is another musician somewhere in Samaru who may be moving around and nobody will bless him what is the difference their value your value is a representation of your worth based on your ability
there are two dimensions to value i want to talk a bit about value number one is intrinsic value write it down intrinsic or inherent value value that came with you it was a gift from god to you part of your packaging and part of your wiring it can be improved upon hallelujah are we blessed this night i really want to challenge you look at me please please do not trivialize what i'm teaching you god is not a herbalist this is the key that lifts men above recession i was talking to one of our ladies she works in the bank and um, i was talking to her this morning and i told her i said how is it going in the bank and she said kai things are, are really bad for many people though but she said there are some i said that's right in my mind i said that's me you are now talking about me he said there are some their lives have increased and multiplied do you know the concept of recession is not supposed to apply to an individual recession only makes sense when you look at it from a corporate and a territorial perspective there was famine in samaria minus the king minus the king number two minus elijah all the people elijah never said please even elijah begged for bread elijah did not beg for bread in samaria he came gallantly and saw people eating their children the other one said we ate my child yesterday we said let's boil this other child and the woman refused are we together prophet we boiled my child yesterday when I was eating my child, we ate together. Now is the turn to eat her own child and they refused. And the prophet said no. Let me tell you something. Your value vetoes your education. Your value vetoes your cultural background. Your value vetoes any limitation. I don't care what it is. Will you open up the gates? open up the doors will you open up the gates open up the doors listen believe me brothers and sisters when I tell you your value vetoes a lot of things Sunday Adelaja 96% of his membership in a communist nation right ukraine a communist nation 96 percent of its members are white in a communist nation value the key to eradicating a sense of unworthiness is not criticizing great people this is what a lot of pastors go through this is what a lot of business people go through this is what a lot of individuals go through they think the key is resentment and anger and hatred no the key is to pay the price of discovery and developing your value a student comes in backtrack five years six years a naive young person probably in his teenage comes into an institution i want to study medicine not even having an idea of what he wants to do are we together or the implication and he goes through five six probably seven years of rigorous training they never change his skin they never change his clothes they only change his mind and after six seven years a panel of people will test him and accredits the fact that he is worthy of being called a doctor and they issue a little piece of paper that becomes his authorization value i am surprised when many people say why am i poor what kind of question is that why am i poor why am i suffering the recession and I mean no disrespect as I communicate this. Everyone is left to his lot. If Bill Gates, for instance, let me use finances. If Bill Gates comes here right now and says everybody 
go and hold someone whose life you changed if you can hold five people you receive a million dollars some of us will roam to everybody you touch somebody you say i will slap you you've not added any value to my life why why do you want to hold me i have never been blessed not by your wisdom not by your spiritual life not by your anointing not by your academics nothing about you has changed me but there are others there will not be enough room everybody says he changed me you changed me you blessed me you advised me my business is flourishing because of the idea you gave me that sickness in my body left because of the anointing upon your life the power of your secret place changed my life you preached a message and brought a dimension that changed me problem solved solutions provided lives transformed and there is a reward waiting for you i guarantee you no witch and no wizard from any village and anywhere has the power and the capacity to stand an individual that has worked upon his value what is my value what is my gift what is that ability that can bail me out let me tell you something and I'm, I'm a Nigerian I want to say something that is very serious right now I'm a Nigerian I love Nigeria I love everyone in this country we are brothers and sisters are we together but listen do you know why I want to be sincere with you do you know why a lot of people are suffering this recession now I know many people think he's Buhari others think he's Jonathan other people think he's PDP APC I'm not a politician are you together let me tell you something about the nose diving of the oil revealed that we have never truly been valuable as a people we only receive natural resources and we have been covering it for years the same way to happen to your destiny i mean a, a department they give everybody food free of charge so i think let me tell you you do not generalize impact and success you must be sure what part you are contributing otherwise you'll be ashamed with time we are worship team we are all great but in all sincerity what is your unique contribution one day you hold the mic alone and on that day we know that you are the one limiting the worship team on that day we know ah so that mistake in the keyboard comes from you we have been managing it but right now we are a group of intelligent lecturers we are all intelligent people the day you have to do a presentation as a person life must single you out one day to defend yourself i belong to an anointed ministry great and wonderful we are shaking the world i agree with you a day will come you will stand before the sick apostle i'm not there hey Jimmy, i'm not there my head of department prayer ushering, oh, decoration they are all not there on that day that's when you will know whether the impartations you've been receiving or otherwise life will challenge you life will test it and until you are able to prove it the disciples kept enjoying corporate success until one day when jesus climbed up the mount of transfiguration they were happy they brought an epileptic person they said don't worry about jesus we are here just keep him down they struggled they were embarrassed nothing happened let me tell you do you know what causes jealousy the ease and the flawlessness that someone who has paid the price to be valuable does on something you have been frustrated about you've been praying on a sick body and you gave all kinds of reasons no this person cannot be sick then the person comes for a meeting and even without being prayed for before the opening prayer he is healed and then the person testifies exactly as it happened you know how people testify they will say it the way it happened may god make you to be to develop an appetite to be valuable an appetite to be valuable let me tell you how you know you are really valuable when no monetary value placed on you becomes a burden to the giver you are exceptionally valuable listen listen I can't remember how much this is how much they bought it but let's assume this is 300,000 just an assumption right assume that this pulpit is 300,000 
when they call the price what do you do you look at it the material the quality and he says okay if they look at this and say bring 10 million you look at it and say no that's the same way they rate you so you say 20,000 they say you are telling the truth then you say 100,000 they say for where is money free like that but there are others they don't even say anything their value says any amount priceless 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 and so someone brings 10 million and says sir please don't be offended it's a privilege for me to do this may you be such a person may you be such a person hallelujah Benihin is coming to Nigeria and the plans that have in fact to a point that the very ministry that is bringing him does not even have absolute control over his coming again the Christian bodies have had to come in because they sat and said no 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 no. we are going to come in now he's not only ministering in Lagos he's also going to worry to go and minister in a crusade again say value when Benihin enters a, a nation, no matter who is invited, uh, inviting him, he is received by the ambassador of the America and a presidential delegation. So his coming is not something you wake up and come by mistake. Even if he's strolling, his personality, we call it human capital. My, my desire is that under God myself and this great ministry will be so valuable this place has become like a place of pilgrimage right now the protocol has had to start making arrangements with hotels around why because every week groups are coming individuals are coming from all over the nation it's called value if we remain at this level we will never rise but if we keep rising by the spirit of God and through determination a time will come somebody will come from another state another nation and say it's a privilege finally are you that valuable are you that valuable that your absence is an interruption to somebody's life are you so valuable I'm speaking to you from the depth of my heart then you will know why certain the money we are saying has left Nigeria did not disappear. Money is like energy. It can neither be created nor destroyed. It is transferred. So it leaves from the point of no value, passes through the place of small value and lands in the place of capital value. Say amen. Wanting something for nothing is fraud wanting something for nothing is wickedness now let me tell you how many of us approach it oh god will you keep looking at me like this and god says i've been looking i said laws and i put preachers he said let them come back to to life remember the prayer of 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 who the rich man let them come back to life he said no they have the prophets and the law if they will not listen to them even if somebody comes back to the dead they will not listen just like there are people God has anointed but many people will not listen why should you fail in life your background who told you it's because of your background there are people today with no arms but they are valuable there are people with no legs they are valuable there are people with no eyes they are valuable there are people who cannot speak they are valuable we don't love Jesus just because he's the son of God he's really valuable He's an expression of infinite value by every standard. Are we together? Any man can determine his lot in life. Any man can determine his lot in life. Your reward is in exact proportion. But apostle, I'm a graduate and now I'm working. I'm getting 50,000. But now I'm married to a wife and three children. That's the limit of your value. Because your education was never designed to fund your assignment. It was designed to help you. You are only working at the limit of what you know. And if you do not know more, you will remain that way. 
Hallelujah. Yesterday, um, one of the protocol, he, he usually helps me if, there's, if they need to fix anything in my car, he helps me to fix it. And um, I was going to drop him and I decided to just take a stroll with him. I like talking to people. I decided to take a stroll with him and then to turn and come back. And I was talking to him. I said, do you know why you are in this car now? And he looked at me. I said, there are so many people in Zaria. You can drive and you have loyalty and integrity. It's called value. It end you the right here. When we stop, uh, let me confess, we went to buy suya. Praise God. <laughs> and so, while they were ordering the suya, I made an order of the suya and he was sitting. I said, do you know why you are sitting close to me now? He said, no, sir. I said, value. You are the one who went to fix the car. It gave you the privilege to do it. I told him, do you know why we are not in a filling station now? He said, no. He said, because the tank is full. The day it finishes or gets more, we will need the Philly station. Are we together? Why have I not come to you? Why have I not called you? You don't call me. Why should I? Why should I? You are proving as if I'm nothing. You made yourself so. There is a way you make yourself. There are people who cannot even pick calls. There are others who are angry. Aaron, I don't like what you are doing. Haba. Is it because God has lifted you now? You left us. That's always what they say. I intend to rise. Whoever intends to rise with me, then we move together. I cannot love you so much to be so loyal and keep myself low. I'm telling you why many of us are offended with so many people. Offended. My friend, we used to eat together. But you were not doing the same thing. Now the person has risen. You call the person and a secretary picks. Hello, sir, so, 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 so organization. Please, let me talk to him, Jare. Tell him my name is uh, Ajayi. You don't know me again. And you are shouting and raking and getting angry. Value. May God make you so valuable. Listen to me. Listen to me. May God make you so valuable that your value transcends territories. Because there are values that are only... There are people... That's what we call local champion. One who is valuable within a territory. And so when you step out to another territory, you are as inert as somebody whose potentials is not at work. But there are certain people, even celebrity musicians, even if they step out by mistake, everybody is snapping them, they have to run. Now, they may be going to hell. Are we together? But as far as value is concerned, generally speaking, they are communicating value. It's just the content of their music that is demonic. Their vocal training is excellent to a fault. Now you come on stage and you say, I want to rise. What are you called into? I'm called into the music ministry. Really? Yes. What have you done so far? I've been, you know, a gentleman came and met me one time and he came and he said that he's looking for sponsors. I said, what for? That, that he wants to produce an album. I said, who is mentoring you? He said, nobody. I said, who have, can you play any instrument? He said, no. I said, who has ever approved, genuinely approved of your music? He said, no. I said, I'm not going to help you. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm really helping you by not helping you because I'm, I'm helping you realize the mistake fast. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Listen. Can't you see that this is God's bailout system? I came from a background where we were living in a hut with mud. The mud is not in your mind. The mud is not in your mind. Jesus was born in Nazareth. They said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? He broke that limit. Stop giving excuses. Make up your mind from today. There is something my world can celebrate. Years ago, when I was staying in a little room, praying and reading books, all my money went to buying books. Buy the truth and sell it not. God, you have given me grace for music and worship. Who can invite me 
because of the grace I carry. Don't flatter yourself in mediocrity. Challenge yourself based on a reference that is global. Don't flatter yourself. You make mistakes, you sing off key, and someone says, Kai, you know, Elijah, this is fantastic. You say, Really? No, you didn't do well. You didn't do well. We were glorified because of the anointing, but vocally speaking, you didn't do well. This lack of preparedness is what makes people to mock themselves. Any competition they hear around, they will come. Have you seen people like that? And they say, Why are you here? They say, I'm here to win. And you watch the your competitors just by looking at them you see the flawlessness of their preparation and just the preliminary screening you are back home and they say no in nigeria this is because this person is yoruba that's why they didn't take me no sir you are not good be honest with yourself is i'm not saying you cannot be good listen value is only valuable when competence is added to it value only becomes valuable when competence is added to it yesterday i was studying on diamonds i just decided to study on diamonds i didn't know that there were different kinds of diamonds different kinds and i was seeing the diamonds and the the rigor in finding them and i mean their structure the the precision of their structure is what makes them valuable Are you competent? Are you competent? Seest thou a man diligent in his ministry, diligent in his business? It's only a matter of time. You may be soaking Gary now, but diligence is like a plane, it will lift you beyond the limitations. It can be raining, and you just take a flight, and within one minute, you are already out of that rain. You are not even aware that it's raining again until you land koinonia i'm challenging you i will be a wicked preacher i will be a wicked man of god to not challenge you in the area of value because that's what i'm doing with my life and by the grace of god and in all sincerity that's what has brought me where i am and i told you where i am now is my preparation of yesterday tomorrow will reveal to you what i'm doing today value always precedes manifestation so when you see a man manifest that's not his true state it is his passive state based on your seeing him now in business in ministry there are many pastors who don't know how this thing works and they may never find out there are many people who don't know how this thing works i'm sorry to say but look at zari as a case study almost every business in zaria almost not all but almost every business in zaria is tainted by mediocrity smallness average there's there's nothing world class there's there's no touch of excellence in it we are limited because of our culture i have my small shop this is nice we never learn someone has paid the price and made the mistake for you then you make it again no you must learn from other people's mistakes Are we together i have hardly seen things in this city and i say it with all humility that have impressed me to know that this is at a level of a global repute from our hotels are we together to our restaurant services in fact from the most part they are terrible yet there are many of us seated here if i ask you now what did you say i've been cooking you are the only one who has not eaten the fact that I've not eaten your food means nobody has recommended it. And that means they've been flattering you by saying it's sweet. If food is delicious, we are not stupid people. A means wife makes cakes. Everybody knows. She's not necessarily done any great marketing. Let her works speak for her at the gates. What is so exceptional about what you do? What do you do that will make me feel like I am losing a lot if I don't partner with you? Everybody say competence. Say it, competence. Say it again, competence. Listen, 
if you pay attention to what I'm saying, you will reap an endless, you will reap an endless benefit. Competence. Favor then is when preparedness. The day God wants to bless you, he will station your destiny helpers close to you. Men and women who have the perception and the strength to reward your value. And then he says, now, you have prepared yourself. There are too many, you know the problem with many of us, look at me. This, 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 this pressure for recognition. I want to know that I'm a CEO. I said it, I think it was to the School of Ministry students. People write books after 10, 20 years of a track record. But in Nigeria, people write books to start up what they are doing. So someone who has nothing writes 81 keys to the billionaire lifestyle. A book is an authorization for men to listen to you based on a result that is obvious in your life. You are documenting your persuasion to create a track for people to follow. Years ago, a few, well, they are not really my friends, but they are ministers too. They met me and said, Apostle, at your level, there are some bishops who are not like you. You should be on TV and radio. I said, I hear. So that I will get to a point where I'm limited and I have to beg for partners. Isaiah 77, give me Isaiah 61, give me 61 naira or 610 naira. I don't want to do all those things. I don't want to stand on air playing gimmicks. I want a situation where the day Koinonia comes on air, someone will say, this is what I've been looking for. I have, I have one, I mean, I have a business that is producing $10 million every month. I've been looking for a ministry to sponsor. This is it. Solutions provided. Problem solved. Lives transformed. And you enter your Sabbath at once. Please hear me, Koinonia, and all those following. Not everybody is a victim of this recession. I tell you the sincere truth from the depth of my heart. I say it with all humility and not in any boastful way. I say it with all humility and not in any boastful way. The finance of this ministry has skyrocketed in a way and a dimension that is irrecoverable this year, more than any year put together. Now, please, I'm sorry if it looks like I'm boasting. I'm only challenging you in the time we call recession. Say something I do not know. Say it again. Something I do not know may be responsible for my limitation. One of my pastor friends started bus transport, bus services, and he called me. He said, Apostle, I can't believe this. You've been transporting people on bus services and we're not so much in our church. Just at one junction where everybody will wait. After one month, we looked at when they sent the report, I said, nobody, a trek from wherever you are coming. And we've done this without fail not for Friday's program. Any time this ministry is holding any program, once it is night, we're a responsible ministry. At any time, whether it was planned or not. Brothers and sisters, there is something that is being done. This is where I'm taking you to. It was not like that. Our first crusade, they were almost locking me because of 150,000. Aaron, whereas the money that is circulating now was still there. I have learned through pain, I have learned through mistakes. I've learned through mentorship and you are receiving it for free. I pray that you will treasure it and I pray that it will lift you higher than ever. Some of you are about to get married. You know you are not ready. Are we together? You already know, not by revelation, by wisdom that your wife is going to suffer. You know that your children are going to suffer. How do I know that there is no plan? Dotham was became mighty because he prepared his way before the Lord. You are not preparing your way. There can't be greatness. Don't be too quick to show forth. Prepare. 
everybody say prepare prophesy to yourself say myself prepare myself be competent myself work on yourself hallelujah prepare don't make noise don't take this colleague mentality moving around i used to know you pastor femi we are fellow pastors colleague mentality is the key to the undoing of many people oh we were classmates the same class the same university the same this the, we are both doctors we are both professors no 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 the bible says one star different from another in glory say in the name of jesus there is a, an ability say there is a gift within me that is greater than zaria greater than nigeria there is an intrinsic value within me that can bless me that can bless the kingdom and i will search it out hallelujah there is an intrinsic value now intrinsic value has to do with value that is inherent the only thing you do is to develop it is there i'll give you an example intellectual property is an intrinsic value you don't refrigerate it you don't warm it you don't keep it in a safe in a bank is there is there you've trained your mind intelligence intellectual property is there he's playing this keyboard now this is intrinsic value is value within him value that does not depend on the external environment for its performance are we together now yeah a photocopy machine is not an intrinsic value the machine needs a demand the machine needs a lot of things. The machine needs light. Are we together? The greatest way to rise is to walk first on your intrinsic value. You have the grace to sing. Walk on it. You are an entrepreneur. Walk on it. Don't say I'm a CEO. CEO that is not producing results is a sign to sit down. Say I'm a potential CEO. There are people moving all around with complimentary cards and flattering themselves i am this and that and that i'm into real estate agro allied products and so on and so forth we have branches in in, in ghana Benin republic Port lagos and so on and so forth and you look at the person who is talking you ask him sir what do you know about real estate? Say, look, that's not the most important thing. Me, I'm telling you, my father did it. He gave me, and he has one plot of land somewhere. You see, we, we mock ourselves. Packaging is only meaningful when there is content. Packaging is only meaningful when there is content. Packaging without content is like a balloon. You hold a balloon and claim that the balloon is, is a metal. You will just touch it and it will burst. I sing better than many people who are called into the music ministry yet they want me to buy their album no i told you last week there are many people who claim they can cook they have restaurants are we together and you start bullying people and say ah shouldn't you come and eat in my restaurant i saw you the other day ella you should come to my restaurant to eat are we not fellow koinonia people she wants to be healthy she wants to be healthy and as far as it is concerned you have not worked on yourself One of our school of ministry ladies, uh, um, she made one beautiful work, just a beautiful artwork. The students saw it. I mean, she's here. Very fantastic artwork. And when I saw it, I said, my goodness, this is excellent. I told her, improve yourself and monetize your value. Monetizing your value is the last thing you do when it is flawlessly competent. Then you place a price on it. Are we together? Now, I want everybody to write. Write three things you know God has put in you that must be developed and deployed. Please write it down. Young, old, write it down. Type it, write, do whatever it is. Please write it down. Don't flatter yourself. Don't write what you don't have. Just patiently think and you'll find your own. Don't just write because your neighbor wrote something. 
Value. Value. Aaron is here. He handles most of the logistics of the you know people around different kinds of logistics. Why? Because he's worked on himself and he's still working on himself. The other day I went to his house and I saw a blackboard close to his uh, just a little like dining or thereabout and his little office that he has and I saw him writing goals. I saw targets. I saw plans of action. I said this is excellent. This person is going to go far. Please do not think discovery simply means it is worthy of reward. That you have discovered a thing does not mean they will reward you. It must be developed to the highest level of excellence and then communicated with integrity, communicated with discipline and communicated with the anointing. Hallelujah. I met a pastor and the pastor told me something. He said, man of God, if you, he's quite an elderly man. He said, if you continue going the way you are going, you are going to have such an exceptional ministry. I said, thank you, sir. I intend to. And that's why I seek people like you to add to my life. I am not ashamed of my ignorance. I'm not ashamed of my limitations and the things that I do not know. There are many things I do not know. I know some, but there are many others. If I knew them, I would not be where I am. And I humble myself to seek for knowledge. I see the way people trivialize knowledge and trivialize the sacrifices of others. Are we together? You call somebody you perceive to be valuable and then you tell the person, when can I come and meet you? Or when can you come and meet me? And the person says, why? He says, I have a business proposal. I want us to rob minds together. Sit down with your broke, bad attitude and you will never rise. Never, never rise. There's so many people who do that. Why am I challenging you? I want you to rise beyond the recession. You've heard the testimonies of people. This money has not flown anywhere. This greatness has not flown anywhere. The concept of recession to an individual is a mirage. Hear me. Please hear me. I understand business. I'm not daft. I'm not stupid. I know what I'm saying. The concept of recession is not supposed to be explained from an individual platform. It is when you look at the economy territorially, societally, then you can say based on the GDP of a nation, based on certain indices, a nation, when it does not meet certain things, then there is a recession. There is inflation or whatever it is. But not an individual. There has been no time in the Bible where famine affected everybody. There, were, there, there has always been exemption. Those who offer value are the ones who are exempted. Please hear me. What gives you the justification that between today, Friday, and next Friday, something would have entered your hand? Or I'm not necessarily just saying money. Somebody would have acknowledged the fact that God is using you to bless him. My life has been transformed. What value do you have? You see, the anointing does two things. It activates something within you that was not there and amplifies something within you that is there. It activates something within you that was previously not there or introduces a better word introduces something within you that was not there like the healing grace right like revelation the capacity utterance but then it also amplifies something within you that is there like creativity like leadership like your gift so number one your encounter with God that produces a fear of God in you. Number two, a transformed mind. Transformed beyond your cultural limitations. Number three, the discovery and the development of your abilities, your value. Please do not forget this. 
greatness wealth any kind of achievement in the kingdom is based on a reward system it's not just the issue of the will of god the issue of the will of god as far as our greatness is concerned is not a mystery it is clear in the word i know the thoughts that i think towards you said the lord jeremiah 29 and the 11th chapter thoughts of good and or peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i commanded this day right that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you there is always a part you have to play there is a part that i have to play huh joshua chapter 1 verse 8 this book of the law he says shall not depart from out of thy mouth he says but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein then he says then only then shall thou make thy way prosperous and you shall have good success success that does not steal away the time of your family success that does not steal away your life are we together give me five ten minutes let me talk a little let me take point three a little more write this down please i know that i've taught a lot about finances but let me just talk for five ten minutes on a few things about our financial life number one let me tell you something a job alone will limit you i want to i want to expand your horizon and work on your creativity a bit a job alone will limit you brothers and sisters no matter how much of a job you get no matter how great of a job you get a job does not have the capacity to fund your assignment your needs are plenty family needs the average african family has siblings that are looking up to you for assistance it's capital intensive to live in nigeria to send children to school almost all of us here by the time you are a christian and you are born again you have commitments to your church to your group to your ministry and part of it is financial commitment part of it there are several things you have to do that take money from you you are broke let me give us a little financial intelligence we'll always add this you are broke anytime your inflow is far far less than your outflow it, it is it is it, it you will always without fail be on deficit one naira comes into your life you need four naira to go out of your life you will be in trouble you will have to be in trouble you cannot be earning fifty thousand naira probably a hundred thousand and believe that that in itself you remove tight you remove a lot of things it is just not enough that's the challenge with our parents hundred thousand was enough when they had one child now they had they have five children but their finances have not increased so it's pinning them and straining them to death are we together what then is the solution activate other streams of income 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 don't sit down running around and say there's no job and i don't mean don't do small mediocre things that waste your time your energy your money and then at the end nothing comes out from it activate streams of income work on your mindset monetize your intrinsic value that is being developed you will rise above recession i tell you are we together did you know for instance did you know for instance every week we rent chairs in the dozens during the miracle service we rent thousands of chairs in the dozens that's someone's business are we together that's someone's business every week there are things only in this ministry alone that can make an individual a millionaire 
if he knows how to create a system around that value and supply it. Just, I mean just koinonia alone. Please activate streams of income. Take responsibility for your life. And don't give people anything substandard. You are, you are insincere and you are ungodly. When you whet the appetite of people over a value you know you cannot offer. Don't be that insincere. Make sure that you have worked on yourself and you are competent enough. Then you can open up your hands for value. Don't collect a contract to help somebody roof his house and then you roof nonsense. No, don't do that. If you know you cannot work on it, package yourself. Work on yourself. I work on myself every day. I returned back from my trip yesterday as tired as I was. I made sure that my daily goals were met. Please, don't you think that it is just the anointing. The anointing is there. I'm going to talk about it. Paul said, I thank my, he says, I am what I am by the grace of God. He said, but this grace was not showered upon me in that I labored more than ye all. I prepare an average of two to three sermons every week. It takes time. It takes research. It takes staying in the spirit. There are other aspects of my life I am involved in. What are you doing? There is no laziness. Don't sit down and say, oh God, when will you change my, my situation? Don't sit down and say, who will come and marry me out of this problem? Nobody. At least nobody in Koinonia. And brothers, don't wait and say, which lady? The Bible says, he that finds a wife, finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Are we together? This is the undoing of Africa. This is the undoing of many people. My neighbors, um, they bought a few months ago, they bought a grinding engine. And the moment they bought that grinding engine and stationed there, at once they became relevant in that environment. Almost all the houses within that environment no longer enter a car and go to Samaru to go and grind beans or whatever. They come to them. What is their reward? The transportation of everybody who should go there now comes to them a place that was previously very quiet and conservative now you see the people early in the morning the engine is up and they are grinding sometimes till late in the night and they are making money from it please i want you to go back and sit down and be sincere with yourself young and old sit down and say i now see why things are not working in my life i now see why i'm feeling the heat of the recession I am not saying you should be a money monger. Remember, we've done financial dominion. So you cannot sit and say now, which business do I do? Uh -uh. That's a wrong question. How do I develop myself to rise to a point of value? When you are valuable, then now you build a system around that value. That's what we call business. Business is simply the art of packaging your value that has been developed to serve a targeted people. Then you receive financial rewards among other things. There's nothing mysterious about business. Building a business is simply having a value, converting it to a product or a service that is needed and useful and then creating a system that informs your potential customers of what you have to give. Very simple. But it's not as simple as it sounds. The last point. Rise to a point of value. Rise to a point of value. The last point. What is the fourth key to becoming transgenerationally relevant? The fourth key to rising beyond recession. We name the series Thrive. To thrive does not mean to manage. The thrive, to thrive means to blossom. Thrive gives a picture of a plant growing out. You see how a plant grows out of the soil. And you see it moving regardless of, of the strength of the soil. It shoots through it and it blossoms. That's what it means to thrive. You don't thrive if there are no obstacles. You thrive in spite of obstacles. The fourth key is an encounter with the anointing. Ah, anointing.
anointing anointing fall on me anointing fall on me let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me anointing fall sing it one more time everybody anointing fall on me anointing let the power of the Holy Ghost let the power of the Holy Ghost I love what I'm about to share with you, I'm telling you, because it's something that has changed my life. You, you, see, you see the amazing dimension of God when you understand the anointing. You are amazing, them. You are amazing. You are amazing. You are amazing. Oh, oh, oh. anointing the anointing write this down let me give you a few definitions about the anointing the anointing you are amazing girl. You are amazing. You are amazing. You are amazing. Write this down. The anointing is God's seal of authorization to represent Him in your territory. The anointing is God's seal of authorization. It's His authorization upon an individual to represent Him. The authorization for legislature. The authorization to represent God and to represent heaven on earth. The anointing. Number two. The anointing is the capacity to produce change and compel compliance. The capacity to produce change and compel compliance. Psalm 66 verse 3 How terrible art thou in thy ways Through the greatness of thy power Shall thy enemies submit themselves to you To compel compliance Number 3 Now I love this definition The anointing Is an empowerment To manifest the possibilities in God an empowerment to manifest to reveal to make known the possibilities that are resident in God there are possibilities in God it's a slogan that we use here experience possibilities I think the media should do a montage on this experience possibilities it's a slogan we have come to not just recite but believe we've indoctrinated ourselves with the fact that there there are limitless possibilities in god and those limitless possibilities can find expression to the degree to which the unction the grace of god is at work upon the life of an individual the bible is a compendium an unfolding of the possibilities that are resident in god 
revealed from generation to generation hallelujah i got a testimony recently and um, i'm sure they may be following online and they, they sent it to me so i can share it in the open when we went to yola for the last crusade a few months i think a month or two ago we went to yola one of the person who was driving me around is a doctor phd you know with his wife he's been married and they've, they've been i mean no child this thing has not worked for them and he decided that he was going to drive me around as a seed you know it's been a while they've been married they're probably following now and his wife couldn't take in and you know when they were done we're about to leave i asked him i said what would you want the lord to do and then prayed for them and he sent me a text i think it was on our way to bauchi now on our cookie no no bauchi was on our way to bauchi i just got a text he said apostle the text is still on my phone he said i called to tell you that my wife went to the hospital and they said i think she's three or a month pregnant say results shout it listen results are evidences that god is alive not just an evidence that a man is anointed it's much more than that it's much more than that it's much more than that during our dinner we'll be playing some videos i hope that the media would consider that i don't know what their plans are but i hope that they should incorporate that and one of the things that we're going to be doing is playing clips and showing you a few pictures of some of the external ministrations and some of you will marvel and wonder marvel and wonder at the hand of god and what he can do when a man is anointed i've said it and i will say it again and again the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference how can the anointing make a difference when it is the difference it is the very difference when all is said and done the grace that comes upon the life of a man i have found david my servant and with my holy oil i have anointed him and the enemy shall not exert upon him and then he reads on and he says and in his in my glory shall his horn be exalted listen let me tell you something i have come to respect the anointing not because of what it has done in my life alone but this ministry you see is a place of possibilities the testimonies the tearful testimonies that have come and it's not just because of joshua selman take the anointing out of my life and i'm as empty as this chair you see are we together someone's life is going to be changed because of the anointing someone's life will rise because of the anointing listen after you've worked on your gift your gift needs to be anointed it's one thing to be gifted but is your gift anointed it says the spirit of man is the candle of the lord but candle without fire on it cannot give illumination are we together there is an anointing that can come upon you and change the dimension of your entrepreneurial exploits and you will see things happen that you never believe there is an anointing that can come on you and your academic career just skyrockets in a way and a dimension there is an anointing that can come upon your music ministry so much more than the vocal competence and your work you lift a voice and sing a song and that song becomes somebody's healing that song becomes someone's i was watching a video today covenant christian center and i was watching their their um leadership their, their summit that they hold their yearly summit and i was listening to some speakers and while they were talking i said my god these guys are not just business moguls they are they are absolutely anointed absolutely anointed are we together thou anointed my head with oil you did not anoint my cup you anointed my head but that anointed translated to my cup overflowing there is a relationship between what is on your head and what flows from your cup thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over 
In 2 Kings chapter 4, the wife of the son of the prophet went to Elisha. And Elisha said, what do I need to do to you? What is, what is wrong? What is the problem? And she said, you know, this and that, there is this situation. And then he says, what do you have in your house? And she said, nothing. Thy handmaid had nothing except a little cruise of oil. And he said, that's it. He said, go and borrow vessels, verse 3. Go and borrow vessels from all your neighbors. He said, borrow not a few. Borrow not a few. If you increase capacity, every oil assumes the shape of the container that holds it. If I pour this water on the cover, listen. If I pour this water on the cover, the cover will limit the water. This makes this water look as though it is triangular. Pour it in a plate, the plate will become like that. Thank you. Are we together? The anointing. And then when she got it, he now told her, he said, go and close the door. When the prophet was talking, the anointing is a living thing. It was hearing. It was hearing the discussion. And the moment she did that, she began to pour the oil. The oil began to multiply. Listen, it's not enough to be anointed. You must be anointed at a level that can command notable results. It's not enough to be anointed. The anointing is like currency. The anointing is like currency. 100 naira can buy sweet, but 100 naira cannot buy shoe. But it is still money. So don't say I'm anointed. The Bible says Acts chapter 10. Right? When Paul was speaking in the house of Cornelius, the salvation of the Jews, in verse 38 he said, How God anointed. Look at the extent to which God anointed Jesus. So it's not just that Jesus was anointed. Look at the extent. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And then the Bible says on the strength of that anointing, he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil. Why? For God was with him. The anointing is not an instrument to shake and fall down and roll. No. Those are just effects of the anointing on the human body. And then alongside with other spiritual dynamics that happen at the point of impartation. But the proof that a man is anointed is not shaking. Results. Results. I don't care whether you shake like a leaf. Results, brothers and sisters. I just want to praise you. I lift my hands to say I love you You are everything to me And I exalt your holy name John said, go and ask Jesus, are you the Messiah? Is it true that the anointing is on you? And Jesus said, all right, watch this. The blind eyes open, the deaf ears hear. And he said, go back and tell John. How do you know a man who is anointed? Results. Results. Don't trivialize results. It's not all about the results. Are you joking? What then is it about? Results. Lives changed. Results. Hallelujah. When there are miracles and signs and wonders and lives transformed, you speak to someone and just one prophetic word turns his life around. You've had all kinds of testimonies here. Someone with jam result 140 something. After prayer, you come back 260 something. How do you explain that? It's the anointing. A woman barren for eight years returns with triplets, no CS. How do you explain that? Results. Are we together? 
results. A whole family almost ravaged with HIV. That cause and it's not by sleeping around and just one prayer and everyone is healed. Not just one person. It's called results. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you the truth. You may be criticized, but you will never be ignored. Once the anointing of the spirit is upon the life of a man, upon the life of a business, Satan will raise criticisms. Why? So that your word will not be heard. So that you will not be believed. And so that people will not be blessed. But here's what the Bible says. You can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. The truth was buried only for three days. After three days, it came back to life. Results. Results. Notable results. Not just results. It says the spirit of the Lord. Please give us Isaiah 61. The messianic prophecy. It was a prophecy about Jesus Christ. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, he says. For he has anointed me to preach glad tidings to the poor. To bind up the broken hearted to set the captives free. Are we together? And then he continues and he says to proclaim liberty to the captives. And all of that to proclaim the year of vengeance of our God. And all of that to comfort all those who mourn. Verse 3. And then he says to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. That's what the anointing does. Beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for the garment of praise right oh I'm, I'm the oil of joy for money the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness then he says that they may be called oaks or trees of righteousness the planting of the lord that he through them might be glorified that they may be called oaks of righteousness brothers and sisters when a man comes to a ministry wretched terrible not born again and something happens to him it's called the anointing you get born again you get filled with the Holy Spirit. Your life is transformed. Your mindset is changed. You become a leader. You become an ambassador of the kingdom. Then you are now anointed again to reproduce say The anointing. There is nothing one of our core values as you know in this ministry is the anointing. We believe in the anointing and we believe that anything that is done outside of spiritual empowerment is a waste of time. Absolutely. So you will see the technical department preparing as though they are prayer band. Because everything is done with respect to the anointing. They believe that the sounds are not just instruments of physics. They are spirit and life. Are we together? Listen. Please hear me. I do not boast to have risen so far. Compared to where I need to go, I am just starting. But I can tell you this. I have had the privilege of mentorship to clean upon the shoulders of those who represent the systems of God upon the earth. And this is what they have done. And this is what they do daily. The keys are finite. The keys are not infinite. But every one of them is important for the door to open. The keys to your destiny, they are not infinite. They are not so many. But each and every one of them must be there in place. It's like a code. Your passion for God. A transformed mind. Your gifts and your abilities. And then the anointing of God upon you. No, no, no. You can't be weak. You can't be weak. You can't be weak. It's my prayer that after this teaching someone will not just hear and say wow this was nice honestly when you see me talk like this I talk from my heart because this is it you know sometimes you can be looking for what you don't even know it is but when someone who has found it says look this is what you are looking for don't go around and waste your time and come back and say ah, ah I didn't know it was like this hallelujah Holy Spirit you are welcome Fill this temple With your presence Make sure you talk to him while praying
Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill this temple with your presence. Sing it one more time. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Hey, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Welcome to our lives and destinies. Fill this temple with your presence. We wait on you, Lord, we wait on you, we wait on you, Lord, we wait on you, I wait on you, I wait on you, Lord, I wait on you. Please pray, please pray, those outside, you can come in, clear the way for them so they can come. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. I want you to sing the song, it's not a special number. Fill this temple with your power. That's what we need. The anointing upon our lives. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill this temple. We wait on you. Spirit, breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Shabarataya. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. This is my prayer, Lord. You are the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. You are the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place.
to mean business with your destiny ah. I want you to mean business with your destiny don't worry about the rain there are people who will direct you strategically don't be distracted Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. Father, I declare that my mindset must change. Lift your voice and pray. Pray from the depth of your heart. Are you praying? Change my mindset. Change my mindset. Change my paradigm. Hallelujah. Please help me, technical. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to listen to me. The quality of your life on earth is dependent on your level of mental transformation. Not every information is needed and useful for your destiny. The fact that you are getting information does not mean you are growing. The fact that you are learning new things does not mean you are rising. The information you are getting must be needed and useful. It must be needed and useful. I like you to pray and say, Lord, the grace to edit everything that is not useful for my life and destiny. Lift your voice and pray. Ela que te presta te aprende a chamar de balarama. Embrusa seca tu sopra te escala maria da balada 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's raining, but we're still praying. Hallelujah. 
apologize to some of those who are at the aisle outside. Sincerely apologize. Hallelujah. As much as possible, if they can find any place, even if it's just outside, let's see how we can help them. But regardless of what condition you are in now, let me tell you, it is profitable what you are doing. Because it will pay you more than money in the name of Jesus. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, what have you put in my life that should bless my world? Reveal it, reveal it to me. Lift your voice and pray. Lord my gift Lord the ability that you have put within me in the name of Jesus Christ I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost there is an ability, 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 there is an ability within my spirit, there is an ability that can change my life, there is an ability that can change my environment. Hallelujah. 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 We're praying. The Bible says there is this treasure. The vessel containing it may be earthen, but the treasure is not earthen. It says there is this treasure in Joshua Selman. There is this treasure in Koinonia that the excellency of power may be of God and not of man. I like you to say every gift you have put in me, Lord, bring it out. Bring it out. Bring it out. Bring it out. Lift your voice and pray. Every hidden potential. Every hidden potential. I'm rising beyond recession. I'm rising beyond limitation. There is a gift in me. There is a gift in me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 60 verse 1 says, Arise, shine, not because you are tired of sitting down. He said, They that sat in darkness, the city of Nephtha and Zebulun, he said, They have seen a great light. Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The Bible says for darkness, confusion shall cover the earth and cross darkness the people. He said, but upon you, his glory shall arise. Verse 3 says, Gentiles, hallelujah, Gentiles shall come. You will not look for them. Gentiles will come to your light. Gentiles will come. You will not publicize. There is an unction. There is a gift. There is an ability. Gentiles shall come to your light, then their kings to the brightness of your rising. It says your gates shall be continually open. They will not be closed day or night to receive the forces of the Gentiles. Listen. I want you to lift your voice and cry and say all those who have been ordained to honor my gift 
I call them into my life. Lift your voice and pray. Please be serious. Everyone in every territory, call, ordain, anointed. Everyone call to honor your gift. Your capacity, your education, your skill, everyone, ordained of God, everyone, ordained of God, everyone, ordained of God, to honor what you carry, call them forth by the power of the prophetic, by the power of the prophetic. I call them, I call them into my life. I call them into my destiny. I call them into my life. I call them into my destiny. In the name of Jesus, I command them to appear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you what the Bible says. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. And to him that seeketh, he will find. And to him that knocks, the door will be open. When you knock on that door, it will open, I assure you. I like us to pray. I like you to cry for a fresh anointing that will lift you higher. You are not down, but where you are is the limitation of the unction in ministry, in business. There is an oil, there is an unction. Thou anointest my head with oil. Lift your voice and pray for more. Fresh grace. Fresh grace. Fresh grace. Upon my life, fresh grace. Upon Koinonia, new levels, new dimensions of kingdom exploit. For the sake of His Majesty. Oh, upon my life, upon my life, I cannot be ordinary. I cannot be ordinary. There is a supernatural anointing, the power of the Holy Ghost, taking me higher, taking me higher. The power of the Holy Ghost, a superior unction upon my life, a superior unction upon my business, a superior unction. Pray. Upon my marriage, a superior unction, an unction that cannot be ignored, an unction that cannot be ignored, an unction that cannot be ignored, an unction that cannot be ignored. Everyone that asketh, receive it. Everyone that asketh, receive it. Everyone that asketh, receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. It's raining, but hear me. I am a living testimony that when a man cries unto God, he can hear. The last two or three months, 
have been phenomenal seasons of my life stepping into strange operations of graces and unctions testimonies beyond imagination you can pray it through genuine desire a heart that is thirsty thou son of David have mercy on me thou son of David anoint me affect my life breathe on me I look to you for life affect my life breathe on me affect my life breathe on me I look to you for life affect my life breathe on me I'll take my life, breathe on me. of Solomon says because of the ointment so do the virgins love thee because of the ointment so realms you have never entered will come to you it's not just talking of women because of the ointment upon my head so do the virgins love thee they desire to be with you I want you to pray listen there are giants on every mountain every one of us is holding a prayer request because there is an aspect of your life the devil has refused to let you go but tonight i want you to lift up your voice and prophesy to the heavens and challenge those powers and say i must go tonight lift your voice inside and outside cry I must walk away. That carrying out disease must die today. That cancer must die today. That HIV must go today. That barrenness must go today. That stagnation must go today. Pray. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Pray. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Pray. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. hallelujah now before I begin ministering please can I have that family if they are here the family that came with the poison person are they here please let's save time if they are here just signify by wave of hand and then run out here quickly there's a lot to do tonight hallelujah praise the Lord while that is happening I want everybody to follow up on your prayer request if you are here to write please one minute so that when we begin to flow we just move and we don't stop so you have one minute while you are praying in tongues 
just write your prayer requests very quickly so that when it's time to pass it you just pass it very fast make sure you don't keep silent write the issues that have threatened you and watch the god of heaven turn them into testimonies What can I do? I can leave without you. I can leave without you. So tell me what can I do? I can leave without you. I can leave without you. tonight and we declare that this atmosphere is completely under the influence of the Holy Spirit and that everybody here within this vicinity comes under the influence of the Spirit Lord that no one will walk out of this place without a touch of God hallelujah hallelujah now I'm going to begin to minister to us and while I prayed for this in the course of the week, again and again, I kept seeing, please pay attention. Can I have strings, 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 strings? Hallelujah. I kept seeing again and again, spirits, watch this, spirits leeching onto people. This is what I kept seeing. Like a man sitting on a man's shoulder. I saw this over many people. And I said, Lord, what is the meaning of this? And the Lord began to, re to reveal to me that these are the spirits that cause setbacks upon the lives of men and upon the lives of families. And the Lord said, when I come up, he said, the first thing I should do is dislodge those powers. Dislodge those powers. I saw them like a man, like a child who sit down on the shoulder of another, bringing a resistance to your destiny. And I'm about to pray for you right now. There are so many people under the sound of my voice. So many people under the sound of my voice. They must go. Heaven is here to assist us. Lift your hands everyone. Inside and outside. There will be such mighty deliverances outside. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I even see someone um, uh, suffering from severe migraine. But then that migraine you think is just sickness. We are about to make a shout, brothers and sisters. This shout is like the sling of David. It looks ordinary, but there is a circumcision upon it. It's a shout that rises beyond the earth realm. It's a shout that rises beyond the intelligence of men. It's a shout that is like a battle sound to the angelic. 
is like a battle sound because your destiny must open up right now there will be mighty deliverances mighty deliverances hallelujah i'm going to pray for us and then at the count of three we are going to shout that name jesus my goodness i sense the anointing of the spirit heavy the power of god will fall upon many of you in a mighty way and you will see this spirit some of you are already feeling uncomfortable it's the power of god especially many outside there will be mighty deliverances lift your hands now thank you jesus father in the name of your son i pray right now and i sound an alarm in the realm of the spirit I decree and I declare by the anointing of the Holy Ghost that the fire of the Spirit oh restrain not your hand oh mighty one we pray that you arise as a man of war there are destinies at the mercy of your touch I pray that by this shout oh God there be a visitation that by this shout oh God everyone here under any spirit help them please help them bring them out everyone here under any influence as we shout let fire catch them and visit their foundations and i command every power that at this shout you will let god's people go inside and outside one two three shout that name i command witchcraft powers of darkness right now right now in the name of jesus inside and outside inside and outside inside and outside the fire of god is falling on people falling on people i cause witchcraft i cause witchcraft i cause witchcraft I cause witchcraft in the name of Jesus. Lift your hands. Malatata. I'm seeing altars on fire. That's what I see in the spirit. Please bring them out. Altars on fire. One more time, we're going to shout. Physically, many of you will feel the fire. Physically, physically. Right now, in the name of Jesus. One, two, three. locate them i'm seeing ladies ladies a man comes to you in the night and sleeps with you right now by fire oh god locates them right now right now right now i cause that spirit i cause that spirit ladies ladies a miracle is coming to sister i cause those spirits i cause those spirits I'm seeing a family in the vision of the Lord 
everyone in that family has been tied down by witchcraft lord where is that person in this place inside and outside right now as i speak the power of god comes upon that person right now wherever that person is in the name of jesus in the name of jesus inside and outside the power of god comes upon that person <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah lift your voice in one minute this is what the lord is telling me as we begin to pray miracles will start happening lift your voice and break every chain holding you down go ahead this is what god is telling me Your hands lift your hands i hear my spirit families families god is stepping into families there are altars there are altars over families that are about to be broken as you are standing right now god is going to be visiting your family at that shout again inside and outside make sure you're participating inside and outside we are going to shout that name as you shout the name of jesus families i see altars on fire are you ready now father any family under the yoke of bondage as they shout this name let there be a visitation one two three Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your voice. And ask him for a visitation again. Something serious is happening in this place. <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah lift your hands i'm hearing marital spells marital spells please lift your hands listen hear me something mighty is about to happen here the lord is ministering to me that there are people who there are spells tying down their marriages whether single or married right now lift your hands as i begin to speak the wind i see like a wind a whirlwind moving across this auditorium oh. it will catch up with some people right now where are they oh god 
visit them right now in the name of Jesus one more time we will shout that day wherever they are one, two, three Jesus spells spells be broken be broken be broken be broken be broken I'm hearing a name Dorcas. Dorcas, a miracle is coming. Dorcas, an altar is on fire. And I'm hearing the Lord telling me a miracle. Dorcas. Dorcas. Come and stand here. Hallelujah. Who is Israel? I'm hearing a name Israel. Israel, the Lord is ministering to me. Tonight, he must let you go. Let you go. Hallelujah. Now the Lord is showing me a woman. You are here. You had a miscarriage. There is a woman here who had a miscarriage. It's like you had a child and you lost the baby. And the Lord is telling me, please help them, those under the anointing, so that we don't, this place is not rowdy. Listen, let me tell you something. The anointing of the Spirit does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. The anointing does not make the difference. Without the anointing, we are just making noise here. But by the anointing, and I'm telling you this, no matter where you are, whether you are inside here or outside or right at the back, I want you to connect because God is visiting you. And every one of you must have a touch. Dorcas, where is your mother, my dear? Huh? I'm not busy, sir. No, I'm not saying. She's Where is she? Mina, Niger She's in Mina. We have to pray because the Lord is bringing a mighty breakthrough for your family. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Hold my hands, Father. Change the story of this lady by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. As I hold your hands, I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that the Lord set you free. Madam, look at me. Where is your husband? At home. Huh? He's at home. Why didn't he come with you? Because there is a breakthrough that is a portion for him in this meeting. Amen. But I'm going to pray for you. You believe that? Yes, sir. You believe that? Yes, sir. Because this is delay. Yes. I'm seeing delay in your yes, family. Sir. Serious yes, delay. Yes, sir. It's even becoming an issue of argument between you and your husband. Yes, sir. I'm seeing two of you arguing. Yes, sir. But the Lord is saying he's bringing rest to your yes, family. Sir. This Amen, night. Sir. In the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Father, let there be rest. Rest for her. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are doctors. Where is your mother, my dear? You. She stays in Kaduna. Why? The same way you are crying is how I'm seeing your mother crying in the realm of the spirit. And the Lord is ministering to me. The Lord is saying, Why wouldn't she cry when the load is too much on her? Look at me. Like we shared, tell your mother to get back into faithfulness in tithing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And even you yourself otherwise you will keep seeing repeated hardship but hold my hands in the name of jesus lord bring rest to this lady bring rest to her in the name of jesus christ 
where is the woman that had a miscarriage there is a woman that had a miscarriage and the lord is asking me to minister to her we may not be able to minister to everybody but there is there is someone please make sure you don't sit back the lord is ministering to me about that person so that we'll just we'll just pray for her dogara dogara i'm hearing a name dogara dogara who is dogara you your name is dogara yes sir where's your dad he's at home in kaduna he's, he's at home in kaduna. we have to pray for him what i'm seeing will never if they are permitting anything please and um, please maybe carry them out of we're, we're about to pray please don't worry in the name of jesus i lay my hands right now over and i cause that spirit that wants to bring accident in the name of jesus it will not come to pass we cancel it right now by the blood of jesus christ amen madam i want to pray for you the way I'm holding your hands, that's the way the Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's going to begin to hold your hands and that he will cause you to move forward in your life. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's bringing restoration to your life and he's bringing joy to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let it be. You are the one with miscarriage. Why did you sit back now? Come, there's nothing embarrassing about it, madam. This is a family because I'm seeing another one happening and we must pray for you. Yes, sir. It's happening again. Yes. We have to cancel it. Okay. Huh? Yes, it's not a normal thing that you are having miscarriage yes, because there is a spirit that oppresses you. Yes, huh? yes, and that's what is responsible for that miscarriage. It's not just about praying, praying and saying, pray for me. Okay. You understand? Yes, it takes the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You will give birth to a baby boy. Oh. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that this family will experience your touch. Madam, lay, lay your hands on your stomach. Father, there will not be miscarriage again in the name of Jesus. That's right. I see the spirit. Let her go right now. Right now, release her completely. I set her free. Lord, you showed me a baby boy. Confirm your word by the power of the Holy Spirit. Why are they here? Dorcas, your name is Dorcas too. Your name is Dorcas too. Your daughter's name. Just stand and pray for all of you. You are Israel. I'm going to pray for you. Are you a student? Yes, we have to pray because I'm, I'm seeing the devil attacking your academics. Attacking your academics very seriously. So that they will not begin to tell you your scripts are missing. Huh? And then they will implicate you in the malpractice. The Lord is asking me to minister to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare by the anointing of the Holy Spirit that this is broken. You're all Israel's. And I'll pray with you. Let her go right now. I curse you by the God of heaven. Release her right now and let her go. Right now. In the name of Jesus. I'm looking at this woman but in the realm of the spirit all I'm seeing is a large snake. That's all I'm seeing moving around. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where's the usher? Ushers. Lay your hands on this lady. Just do what I do. I curse that spirit. You must release her right now in the name that is above all names there is no hiding place the light of god is against you in the name of jesus christ there is no hiding place for you by the blood of jesus christ you must release this woman is a spirit of death let her go right now in the name of jesus christ father may they experience your touch in the name of Jesus Christ. May they experience your touch. In the name of Jesus Christ. May they experience, I curse that spirit. Let her go. Let her go right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your baby snake. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. There is liberty for this boy. There's liberty in the name of Jesus Christ. There's liberty. Hallelujah. Now, all those who were brought out here under the anointing, I want to, I want to speak to them now. Don't worry. Everyone out here, 
I speak to the spirits that are tormenting you. You know my voice, I represent the most high. At the count of three, leave them and go. Right now, one, two, go, go, go. Out of them. Out. Out of their life. Out now. Never to return. At your Lord, leave their lives. Leave their destinies. Restoration of virtue. Of grace. I cost that spirit from its foundation. I cost it from the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. All those who are trusting God for jobs, lift your hands. I see a strange anointing in this place. Please don't withhold your hand. Don't withhold your hand. There is an anointing. There is an anointing. Sister, you looking at me. Rejoice. I see an appointment letter given to you. You. This lady looking at me. You. Come. I'm talking to her. You are turning back. You. Come, 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 come. I see an appointment letter given to you. There will be mighty miracles of jobs. Hallelujah. Come. This is the person I'm talking about. Because I was praying and before I would even start, I saw them handing over to you something that looks like an appointment letter. Right? You believe me? You believe me? You will see it and you will stand before God's people to testify. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. The Lord says, I should tell you, he's rolling away your reproach, madam. The reproach of many years is being rolled away in this season. That's what the Lord is saying, I should tell you. The reproach of many years is being rolled away. I'm seeing like a baller. That's what I'm seeing. A trash place where they pour dirt. And I'm seeing a new seed shooting out. And that's what is that's that's like a type of your destiny. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you, He's rolling away the reproach from your life. In the name of Jesus. Lift your hands and let's release miracle job. If you don't believe in it, put down your hand. I command you by the blood of Jesus, you foul spirit, you have oppressed this body. In the name of Jesus, I break your covenant, I break your ordinance. There is a strong spirit that has been oppressing this lady. It's not just her. Can you look at how many people holding one tiny lady? I curse you. Now, I curse you. I curse you by the God of heaven. And I curse you by my office. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I curse that power. Let her go now. Right now. Release her destiny. Release her family now. By the blood of the eternal covenant. She's free. Go. Release her now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. Listen, listen. People of God, don't think we're playing games here. I know you may see some of the things happening. These are the powers that have tied down men's life. It's not solved by counseling. You are just moving in the physical yet in the realm of the spirit you are bound we are not embarrassed we are never embarrassed to set people free because that's what Jesus said there's got to be a way of setting people free hallelujah father jobs now in the name that is above all names I want you to receive it as a prophecy over your life. Lord, I declare everyone called jobless here by the favor of God I terminate joblessness right now. By the favor of God I terminate joblessness right now. Anyone who has applied for any job 
I compel them to call you. Amen. I compel them to call your loved ones. Amen. I compel them to favor you. Amen. Hallelujah. Do we have anyone here called Agnes? Agnes. I'm hearing a name Agnes. The Lord is ministering to me about one Agnes. We'll begin to pray for the sick shop. Agnes. I'm hearing the name Agnes. God is ministering to me. He wants to bring deliverance to the family of Agnes. Do we have anyone there? Agnes. Your name is Agnes. Your name too. The family member. Okay, I'm going to pray for you. We we'll begin to pray for the sick after this. Father, in the name of Jesus, bring breakthrough for this family. You showed me that you're visiting this family. Go ahead and confirm your word with signs following. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. Whoever is Agnes in your family, let there be a miracle in the name of Jesus. I want to begin to pray for the sick, but I'm seeing a very serious situation here. There's someone here with a swollen leg. I don't know who that person is. Your leg mysteriously paining you, and it looks it's, it's like swollen. This is what I see in the vision that the Lord is showing me. Who is that person? Your leg is swollen. Where is it? Which of the legs? Look what? Look, if if the devil, you remember I told you this a body without the spirit. Look what is happening to this girl. And then you just come and marry her because you think you want a wife. Are you seeing that? Is is if it can look at one two three four five people holding one person imagine what it would do to someone's destiny i say this without a sense of cynicism many of the people that god is setting free attend churches every week look we need to restore the power of god in our churches and stop playing games with god because God's idea is not just for one platform. Hallelujah. Swollen legs. No, no, no. Don't, you, don't, you don't have to. Madam, I see. You too. Your legs. For how long? What's the situation with her? Is her leg swollen? Okay, hold on. She can't walk. Baby, how are you? Hallelujah. Please help us with the mic. Who brought her? Okay, no, it's okay, it's okay. What's your name? Annie. Annie? Your name is Anne. Agnes. Alice. Your name is Alice. You can't walk. You can walk, but your leg is bent. Oh my goodness, look at such an innocent lady. Lord, have mercy on this lady. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that the Lord will visit you. In the name of Jesus Christ, let her go back when I begin to pray for the sick and we let them come out. I'm just ministering to special cases. Leg, your leg. All of you who had a dream, in a dream, it's like something was shot. It's like, I don't know if it was an arrow. I'm seeing something that looks like a dream, and something was shot on your legs. If the person is not here, I'm seeing someone who had that dream. It's like, I don't know if it was like a gun or something. Or, an, uh, or a, 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 a sharp object. I know that it was, it's like it was shot to your leg. Something beats me when I was sleeping. I just broke up and screamed. So blood was coming out of my legs. I, I'll pray for you, but this one I'm seeing, I just want to flow as the Holy Spirit is directing me. It's like... It looks like a gun or something sharp. 
Huh? I was shot in the realm of the spirit. In my dream. You were shot. Fired at you. Yes. And what happened to you? I only I prayed when I woke up. You the prayed dream. when you woke up. The, the Lord is going to set you free. I know that I've talked to you once, but truly, truly, there is a spirit of delay and stagnation in your life. Because you love God. And God is going to use you in many ways. Not just in the area of the anointing, but even in the area of finances. But as it is, there are many things that are not moving in your life. Lift your hands, let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, the reason why you redeem is so that we will be free. I pray that you set this gentleman free by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Everything that was fired on your leg in Jesus' name, I cursed it. In Jesus' name. What's happening to you, madam? My leg is your leg, yes. what happened? It's just paining you or it's swollen? It's paining in me for me to stand or to walk almost two years. It's broken for Almost two years. Which of the legs? This one. What can't you do? I, I can't stand like this. Some people are standing now. For me to stand still, you can't stand straight. It's a problem for me, yes. Is it that it's shorter than another or what was the issue? It's not shorter than another. Okay. It's the same. It's you believe? Good. As I'm Huh? Why is she here? She's your daughter. My father was shot in a dream by an arrow. It, according to my dad, it entered his thigh and came and out. Came out. The other this thigh. is the person I'm talking about. Yes, and it, huh? it caused a physical wound on his thigh up to present. This guy Where is, is he? Here. Is he here? He's in Lagos, sir. He's in Lagos. Yes, sir. You believe God will touch him? Yes, sir. When I pray for you, call him and tell him yes, that he's been prayed for. Yes, huh? sir. Yes, because sir. this is witchcraft. Where are you from? I'm from Benway State. What's your name? My name is Kate. Kate. Yes, sir. From Benway State. Hold yes, my hands. Father, this is this family. You have revealed this in the name of Jesus. I cause this witchcraft. Let it leave your father never to return. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let it leave your father never to return by the anointing of the holy spirit in the name of jesus christ i pray madam you believe jesus will heal you yes, I believe. you believe with all your heart yes madam what's your situation i have new pains since Me. i yes since i feel sick they used to swell up since, since, you, I, since I was sick for six months they used to swell up but now i can't walk i can walk and be feeling sharp pain where where is the sharp pain okay how about you five years where is which one is swollen? Oh, I see. You can't stand. I can't stand for long. For a long time. Mama, how about you? I'm not two months now. I started in this leg. Two two months? Yes. What's happening? I have arthritis. You have arthritis? Yes. Who else? Who again? I have leg problem. Leg problem. All of you, I'm going to pray for you too. Your legs are swollen. Oh, you are the one who said something beat you. Ah, you are a worker in this place. Let's challenge that devil. She's a worker in this house. There is an immunity. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare that this will never return to her again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Never return to her by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to pray for you. And I want you to check yourselves after I pray for you. Jesus. Sister, five years your leg has been swollen permanently like that. Have you gone to the hospital? What did they tell you? Nothing was found. Eh? Nothing was found. Nothing is wrong. Because when a thing is spiritual, no matter what happens in the physical, you may not be able to get an equivalent, um, a, a something to be able to treat. But Father, in the name of Jesus, we cause witchcraft. This is the leg, right? In the name of Jesus Christ, I command freedom, freedom for your legs. In the name of Jesus, I break the power of witchcraft. Mama, I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray for you right now. Every wicked spirit leaves you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lay your hands on your chest. The Lord is bringing you deliverance right now. In the name of Jesus. This is witchcraft. For five years, I'm seeing a spirit. Go! Go! In the name of Jesus, you can't remain in her. The swollen legs, I command the swelling to go down. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, Mama, I pray for your leg. In Jesus' name. I pray for your leg. That's where the pain is. Just lay your hands there. In the name of Jesus Christ, I cause the pain by the power of the Holy Ghost. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Please check yourselves. Check yourselves. Check yourselves. Do what you couldn't do. Do what you couldn't do. And tell me if there's any improvement. How many of us came here either for ourselves or for our loved ones to be healed? Specifically in the area of healing. Let me just see your hands. Inside and outside, can you just wave it to the Lord? How many of you came here to be healed? Okay, very quickly, while the worship team leads us in a powerful worship session, want all the sick people to make their way right now. Just, just guide all the people that are under the anointing. Just shift them. Don't drag them around. Please, let's do that very quickly. Make your way out and just stand in a straight line and trust God for a miracle. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. And it will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Look how many people are trusting God for healings and miracles. I sincerely pray with all my heart that every church and every assembly of God will permit the power of God to operate in their place. It is not a thing of pride to have so many, look at, literally, maybe hundreds of people right outside. There is a long queue and we'll have to minister to these people. It's not God's idea to have one superstar. It's just that many people, especially men of God, are unwilling to press into the dimensions that bring them to the possibilities we are going to do this very very fast all of you who are sitting make sure you are connected and um, you are participating while we are ministering to the sick I want you to pass your prayer request ushers you can walk around please make sure all those outside even those on the roadside make sure that we receive their prayer request because I will be laying hands on it immediately afterwards myself and Pastor Jax will be ministering to you Whatever your challenge is, I want you to believe God. While you're standing, lift your voice and begin to say, Lord, I will not return back with this sickness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I stretch my hands over your people. Let your healing power deliver and save The Lord is healing someone of pile. I'm seeing someone that has suffered pile for a long time. The Lord is healing you right now. You may be in the healing line, but the Lord is healing you right now. Hallelujah. Please make your way. Make your way. It doesn't matter who lays hands on you. There is a corporate anointing in this place. Hallelujah. Please, as soon as we lay hands on you, just go this way very quickly. There are people right to the back outside so that we'll hurry up. And there are still other things we need to do. Praise God. matter what is wrong with you just a laying on of hands the anointing of the spirit is like a drug the moment it enters your body it begins to work and it brings you healing you will notice that some people are standing for healing but as soon as hands are laid on them devils are coming out because they are the causes of these infirmities Holy, 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 holy,
Pass yours, please. Just do it quickly. Can we all rise? As many as can rise, please, inside and outside. It's a very prophetic moment right now. Jesus, my heart will sing. No other name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Sing, my heart will sing. No other name. No other name. Jesus. 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 My heart will sing. My heart will sing. Please, those outside, can we have it quickly? No other name.
Hallelujah. We just have five minutes to do this. Listen, I assure you, this is the place where God answers prayers. Hallelujah. I may not be able to minister to everyone individually, but I want you to know that this is a representation of your heart's desire. This is a representation of why you are here. And I'm going to lay my hands as, and as much as possible as a point of contact. All I want you to do is stretch your hands here and begin to receive answers to your prayer. Go ahead. Shibarato soto Go ahead. Stretch your hands as I pray on this. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Just play the tune while we pray. Stretch your hands and receive. Shaka parata katabaladaba. Lord, we are praying. Please make sure you are praying outside. Stretch your hands towards the screen. Say, Lord, I receive it. I receive it. Lift your hands and stretch your hands here and pray. Pray from the depth of your heart. There be testimonies in the name of Jesus. Turn impossible situations into testimonies. Lord, we agree, we agree, we agree in the name of Jesus. Turn impossible situations to testimonies. Stretch your hands and keep receiving. I receive by faith. Come on, pray. All kinds of miracles by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. All kinds of miracles. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your glory. Even as these prayer points, Lord, are lifted up to you, Lord. As your people look up to you, Lord. They look up to you, Lord, from whence their help cometh from my Father. I ask you, Lord, that you send angels, Lord. You send answers, my Father. I pray that God doors that are yet to be opened be opened. My Father, I pray for healings, Lord. Healings or terminal cases, Lord, let it be turned. Lord, where people said, there's no way, my Father, we pray that doors, Lord, you create streams in wilderness places. My Father, Lord, for people that cast away, my Father, Lord, you make them renowned by the power of your spirit. We ask for your hand to rest upon your people. Lord, we ask that, Lord, miracles, miracles, Lord, will be given to your people. Answers to prayers, Lord, prayer points that have been pending for many years. We ask that, God, doors be open, Lord. Let miracles, Lord, flow into this house in the name of Jesus. Testimonies, we are bound in great ways, Lord. Unprecedented miracles. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus. We ask for healings. We ask that, Lord, 
people that are insane you cause them to be sane in the name of Jesus we pray for contract that long delayed Lord we pray that Lord will be awarded by the power of your spirit in the name of Jesus and we pray for a shield of protection over your saints Lord in the name of Jesus we ask for a revitalization of spiritual lives by the power of your spirit let the fire of God call, come on cold altars in the name of Jesus let there be healings and touches in families in the blessed name of Jesus we give you praise we give you glory for the great and mighty things you will do amongst us Lord we give you praise blessed Father for we know all our prayers have been answered by the power of your spirit we thank you in the name of Jesus we pray hallelujah hallelujah if you believe that your request has been turned into a testimony i'd like you to shout a loud hallelujah shout a loud hallelujah a loud hallelujah a loud hallelujah 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 for many of you it will be like you are dreaming when you will watch one by one by one by one by one by one in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ it's by the anointing it's not by English burdens are destroyed because of the anointing hallelujah this last segment you've heard me say it again this is the most powerful and most impactful segment if you're not a man of the spirit you may not understand what i'm saying please help them this is the most powerful of this segment right now before we go into this where i begin to prophesy there are two dimensions to prophecy there is the revelatory dimension of prophecy that dimension of prophecy gives you direction but the stronger dimension of prophecy is the creative dimension that's when things that are not become by the power of the spoken word never joke with the power of prophecy that's the power that created the heavens and the earth he said i prophesied as i was commanded before we do that very quickly everyone inside and outside there are people here tonight who are saying man of god i want to commit my life to the lord i've seen the miracles i've seen the signs and wonders but my way is not right with the lord you know that right now as you're standing here if the trumpet sounds you're not making heaven you know it right now having a christian name is not the same as having a relationship with jesus there are some you've given your heart to the lord at one time please help the, uh, those under the anointing i tell you there will be a powerful impartation right now i sense a heavy anointing on me already that's why i'm doing this very quickly now if you are here please don't delay us you are saying i want to return home for whatever reason you found yourself living the ways of god and you are saying lord i have heard your word and i'm not ashamed to make jesus my lord there are people in this auditorium young and old there are people by all the overflows right to the roadside no matter how far you are hearing my voice it should not be too far right now i'll just count one to five please run like you're running away from death run like there's fire on the mountain one inside and outside the devil is a liar tonight don't let any spirit stop you Tori. hallelujah hallelujah keep coming god bless you you have won it all for me hallelujah hallelujah you have won the victory sing hallelujah hallelujah Keep coming, keep coming. Please hurry up and catch up with us. Sasa di Buchi. Sasa di Buchi. Sasa di Buchi. We give you the praise. Sasa di Buchi. One more time. Sasa di buchi. Don't sit back there when you hear the voice of the Lord. Sasa di buchi. 
I appreciate every one of you for coming out. This is the way to the cross. Listen, no matter what you achieve in life, if your eternal destiny is not secured, it says, this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. But he said, this life is in his son. Until you have the son, you do not have that life. Lift your right hand. Forget about who is looking at you. And in the name of Jesus, I want you to pray this prayer from the depth of your heart. You are not reciting a poem. It's not a special number. This is a decision. There's one of you here. You smoke all these kinds of things. Ibo and the rest. Huh? But as you pray this prayer, the power is broken over your life. Say after me, as loud as you can from the depth of your heart say Lord Jesus I love you with all my heart and with everything within me this night I make Jesus Lord of my life I repent of my sins I declare that eternal life comes into my spirit I am born again I'm a child of God from today the power of sin the power of the flesh is broken over me my past is gone and it's over forever I am a new creation in Christ in the name of Jesus the power of sin is broken over my life in the name of Jesus I receive of your life in Jesus name I pray now I stretch my hands over you and I declare the power of sin is broken over your life in the name of Jesus every yoke that has tied you down lets you go forever in the name of Jesus I declare that is a new season for you everything that is a habit and a challenge in your life I release you from it right now every covenant and ordinance of darkness that is the foundation of your trouble by the blood of Jesus it is wiped away I set you free I break you free from every wrong association that keeps you in sin in the name of Jesus Christ I pray hallelujah I want to congratulate all of you for making this decision this is the greatest decision you would ever make in your life hallelujah now very quickly so that you catch up with us in this prophetic session I want you to follow the gentlemen waving their hands they will have your details and then we'll follow you up very closely praise the lord just follow them koinonia celebrate them as they go all of you this way this way just follow the gentleman now everybody rise please i want you to receive this prophetic word this is the seventh month and the bible says revive thy work in the midst of the years hallelujah there is a mystery with the seventh month is the time where God perfects all things as I prophesy to you please I want you to know that there is an anointing that makes it happen hallelujah listen listen don't, don't mind all that nonsense one way to conquer Satan is to ignore him all of that rubbish uh, is, is the devil works in the realm of the senses by the time you focus all your attention on this drama and these things you will waste your time i know you are trying as ushers just stand around satan does not have authority i want you to know that there is an anointing manifestations are already signs that his power is broken but satan knows that we walk in the realm of the flesh so he begins to act around your mind to distract you when you ignore satan is one way of conquering him it does not have the capacity to continue all of this nonsense are you getting my point so this is teaching you so that tomorrow you don't end up wasting your time with all this rubbish and all this drama praise the lord lift your hands i prophesied as i was commanded you are Yahweh. you are seated on the throne you are Yahweh seated on the throne you are Yahweh you 
are seated on the throne father in the name of jesus i'm praying right now by the ministry of angels are they not ministering spirits send to minister today that be the heirs of salvation i pray for you every weakness in your life Shabbatalakata. that weakness dies tonight in the name of jesus every weakness in your life that weakness leaves you tonight in the name of jesus hallelujah i prophesy to you that red sea you are standing before by the anointing of the holy ghost in this second half of the year an anointing comes upon you and i prophesy cross every red sea cross every red sea cross every red sea in the name of jesus christ i pray for every student here oh for there is a spirit in man and the inspiration make it men of understanding i'm praying for you some of you listen as i pray now some of you will literally feel like oil being poured upon your head it's an impartation of knowledge right now oh god i release an anointing to change the story of students at the count of three let it fall right now one two three take it take it take it take it now take it now that anointing receive it for exploits shaka ta 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 inside and outside take it for exploits 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 hallelujah everything called stagnation in your life that has forced you to stay in one position while you should be moving right now in the name of jesus and by the power of prophecy i command stagnation to end now 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 my goodness something is happening to your destiny every night season in your life every wilderness experience that has refused to break forth into the day i speak to you right now your morning arrives finally your morning arrives finally your morning arrives finally hallelujah there is something called favor i don't know if you know it but there is something called favor when the favor of god is upon a man your looks your background your qualifications no longer matter let an anointing of favor right now i see at least 100 people 100 people like fire 100 people right now receive it receive it favor 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 upon your life favor 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 Parekete embratata lakata. I prophesy by an apostolic anointing. Favor, favor, favor. Everyone holding anything that should be given to you for the next level i don't care where they are 
but I sound an alarm in the spirit that in this month we are entering called August may that be the month where you receive the keys of the next level receive the keys of the next level the mysteries of the next level every spiritual blindness Shababa. things happen around you you cannot see blood of spiritual vision i pray right now many of you will see like flashes of light as i'm praying right now you will see literally like flashes of light your eyes are opening right now right now right now right now right now by the power of the holy ghost blindness spiritual blindness spiritual blindness be free from it right now be free from it right now be free from it right now hallelujah there are many of us here dreams and visions are prophetic channels where we get insight and direction but for many of us our dreams and visions have either been corrupted or it's no longer there the bible says they will dream dreams it says they will see visions Shakataba, lift your hands there will be an, a restoration anointing right now i just want you to shout i receive listen many things will happen to you many of you is an activation of the realm of dreams and visions where god will start showing you the blueprint for the next level right now in the name of jesus at the count of three as you shout i receive let there be an impartation upon your dream life upon spiritual visions one two three now you receive it receive it restoration of fire fire dream dreams see visions dream dreams see visions dream dreams see visions dream dreams hallelujah he says what do you have in your house and she said nothing except a jar of oil i want to prophesy upon your gift it's one thing to be gifted but it's another thing for your gift to be anointed there are many of you the gift you have can bring bread to your table but nobody is seeing it it's one thing to be gifted it's one thing to be skilled but it's another thing for your gift to be anointed thou anointed my head with oil and it makes my cup to overflow i prophesy to you whatever has covered your gift whatever has made your gift barren right now in the name of jesus i anoint your gift now i anoint your skill now i anoint your gift now creativity creativity i release it i release that anointing creativity skill expertise competence proficiency in the name of jesus christ listen anybody who has said it's not your time to manifest that you always remain on the background you clap for others but you are not cursed it's god's desire that every man will also come to the lamb light i pray for you whatever has kept you behind right now in the name of jesus i command let the light be on you let the 
the light of glory be on you. Hallelujah. Everything you have tried by your strength to do and you have been unable to do throughout half of this year, you have tried by your strength. I'm releasing grace upon your life right now. Go back to that same day and watch how God will bless you through it. I pray for every ministry here from glory to glory. Every church represented from honor to honor. New dimensions of the anointing in the name of Jesus Christ. Every business here is time to shine. Come on. Every business here, I strengthen your hand. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. Lift your hands. One last prayer. Listen. I want to activate the gift of the Spirit. Without the gift of the Spirit upon your life, your life will be barren and unfruitful. It says, For I long to see you that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye be established. I pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that the Lord Himself, something is about to happen to your life right now as I speak. Father, I come under this apostolic anointing right now across the length and breadth in this auditorium and outside at the count of three let there be an activation of spiritual gifts one two three take it take it gift of healing word of knowledge gift of prophecy 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 I activate the prophetic I open your eyes spiritual gifts endowments of the spirit I declare that you are supernatural beginning from tonight in the name of Jesus everywhere you go you are supernatural let the anointing upon this house follow you like a shadow I prophesy to you every anointing that is upon this house from today let it follow you like a shadow whatever the anointing has brought to this house let it bring into your life Hallelujah. Lift your hands and give him praise. Father, we give you all the praise. I assure you, you will know that this miracle service was unusual. You will know many of you right from this night tomorrow will not reach you start having your testimonies right from this night right from this night favor alerts calls i mean connections mysterious happenings i speak to the spiritual borders of your destiny and in the name of jesus i command that every gate that has been closed the bible says your gate shall be continually open so you have a gate your gate shall be continually open to receive the forces of the gentiles i pray for you in the name that is above all names let everything in your life start working for you i command the earth to work for you i command the wind to work for you I command the stars to work for you everything that is a disappointment in your life 
I change it tonight to a testimony. Hallelujah. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, keep standing, everybody. There are many people outside. Let me speak upon your life personally. Wherever you are, please make your way to the front quickly. We have one minute to do this. God bless you. This is your first time. You are most welcome. There is a prophecy for you. You must carry a signature. No, stand up. Keep standing. Everybody must know you came for Koinonia. Hallelujah. Listen, when you come here, we may not give you hampers, but we give you an identity. You will go back with it and everyone will know that you met the Christ. Make your way to the front. Koinonia, celebrate them. Glorious. Glorious. God brought them by his spirit. Is this the best you can do in appreciation to what the mighty God has done for us as a house? We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall.